Hello everyone. I got a lot of questions recently about the products that I use or the tools that I use or generally speaking my entire process when I'm doing leather working. So today we're gonna make a simple leather wallet but I'm gonna walk you through my entire process. Let's get started. I started by printing the pattern I made and cutting all the parts. I used a cutting wheel and a straight edge for the straight parts and a scalpel for the curves. If you want to make this wallet for yourself, you can find the pattern on my website, theredsmith.com. Some parts look identical, but printing and cutting them all will allow you to see the quantity of leather you need for this build and also punch the stitching holes exactly at the right place. Once I was done with the pattern, I selected the leather I wanted to use. For this wallet, I'm using 2.5mm and 1.2mm vegetable tanned leather for the outside and the middle layer of the wallet and 0.8mm vegetable tanned goat hide for the inner layer and the pockets. I cut the big hide into smaller and more manageable pieces with my cutting wheel. Then I traced the outline of my pattern with an awl and cut all my pieces to size with a utility knife or a scalpel. Goat leather is a little bit stretchier than the core hide and I really like the look of it on its tight. You can use the leather you want, just be sure to use a vectan leather if you want to tool the outside of the wallet like I will be doing and thin leather for the inside layer and the all the pockets. You can use any cutting tool you like, just be sure it's very very sharp when cutting thin leather. When all my parts were ready, I used my Japanese skiving knife to reduce the thickness of the arms of the pocket. I used a 4mm diamond hole punch, so I punched the outside layer of the wallet on the grain side and all the other parts on the flesh side. This way I'm making sure that the diamond shaped holes will align perfectly during assembly and I will get better stitching lines. If you're using a 4mm round hole punch, you can punch all your parts on the grain side.
I used a sponge to wet the left pocket of the wallet and my touch mark to emboss the leather. Then I used my edge creaser 3mm from the top edge of each pocket and inner layer. I let all the parts to dry and starting to work on the outside layer of the wallet. This wallet is for a friend and he wanted a simple design with a shape and a short phrase in Japanese. Once the design was printed on a piece of paper, I secured it to my workbench with tape and transferred the design on a piece of tracing paper. Just be sure to check often so you don't miss any detail. A few registration marks and I was ready to emboss the design into the leather. Once everything was aligned and secured properly, I used a fine tracing tool to emboss the outside of the wallet. When all the parts were dry, I applied two coats of brown leather dye on all the parts, front and back, and let them dry overnight. Then I used black dye to paint all my design and let it dry. Two coats of Nitzfoot oil will unify the background color, make the design pop, and more importantly, protect the leather. Then I used my edge beveler on all the edges of all the parts and used tokonol to burnish all the top edges of the pockets. Just a few drops are enough. And then you can rub the edges with a clean cotton cloth to get a perfectly smooth edge. Then I apply the coat of super sheen to seal the grain, protect the leather and get this beautiful shining effect. Because I like shiny.
All the parts were ready, so it was time for the final assembly and some hand stitching. I started by assembling all the pockets using 0.8 mm polyester waxed thread. Then I could glue the pockets to the back layer and I clamped all the parts till it was completely dry. I made a decorative stitching line on the top side of the outer layer. When you're gluing parts in place, just make sure you align all the edges properly for good results. I finished burnishing the top edges of the inside layer, put the front pocket in place, and stitched all the three layers together. To secure the thread, I made a double knot and I hid it between two layers that I glued together. I used a nail file to clean the edges of the bottom and the side of the wallet and re them. When it was fully dry, I applied the toconol and burnished the edges. The last touch was to make all the edges black using black edge paint. It's not necessary, but I thought it would add a few more details and reinforce the black design of the outside layer. And it's done! Now you can put your cards, bills, picture in it, or just send it to a friend. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters, especially the Diamond Top supporter ones. If you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash theredsmith. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't hesitate to like, comment and share. Till next time, be good. Be safe and keep making.